In my last video, I showed you how we could set up a very simple backpack that would allow for us to store objects in that inventory backpack, similar to how we see in Into the Radius. And this backpack was really simple. It allowed for us to store objects wherever we want within a specific space that we could define however we would like. In our case, we used a simple cube and anywhere within that cube, we can store objects. But there's still a downside to this type of inventory. Unlike more useful inventory systems, we don't always carry it around with us. We still have to remember to grab that inventory system and bring it around with us if we want to be able to use it. And while that can work in some cases, it's probably not the best way and it's probably not the preferred way that you want to use in your own virtual space. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can take that same inventory backpack setup and have it so that way we're able to automatically snap it back to some point on our body when it's not in use. For example, on our back. So before we jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so let me go and show you how this backpack now functions. So if I go and put my hand over the back of my head, you can see I can grab out the backpack itself and same goes for either of my hands. Um, now you can't actually see it, but the backpack is actually positioned behind my camera, um, like directly behind the camera itself. Um, there are some downsides to this and I'll go over that in a second as well as some suggestions for things like that. Um, but anyways, so we can come right on over here and let me just get a little bit closer. I can go and grab my backpack. I can grab a few of these little cubes, pop them right into the backpack here. So there we go. And let me grab one more. Come here. There we go. And, um, one of the things that I personally like to see as well, um, and this is just my, my personal thing. I don't like seeing these shadows when the backpack is behind my head. Um, personally, I think it looks a little bit distracting. It's not really necessary because this backpack is supposed to be out of sight, out of mind. Um, so something that's very nice about this backpack is when I release it, those now disappear behind my head and you can no longer see any of them whatsoever. Um, and like I said, it's directly behind my head. I know there's like no clear way of being able to see that, but that's where it's at. I keep accidentally hitting the, the grip on my in, on my uh, controllers. Um, but anyways, so I can go and reach my hand back over my head. And again, I can go ahead and grab it. And you know, I can do that as many times as I would like. And we, we are also taking a few precautions as well to make sure that this backpack becomes a little bit more un, uh, inactive uh, while it's on the back of my head. Um, you may recall in the first video, for example, we're always checking to see what the nearest um, grab grabable object is. You should no, no longer be able to grab any of these objects while it's on the back of your head. And likewise, if I go ahead and throw it on the back of my head, you shouldn't be able to drop anything in the backpack. It should just drop down onto the ground as well. Um, and again, this is more just personal recommendation. Um, just kind of things that I personally think look a little bit better. Um, there are certainly alternatives to this. Now, the one downside to this backpack is like I said, it's positioned behind the camera itself. So um, if I look down, for example, it's not going to be back here behind my head. So I now have to reach behind there. Um, whereas when I'm looking forward, it's directly behind me this way. So I might even be able to reach behind me this way and grab it. But if I look down, that's probably going to be a little bit more difficult. I think that this backpack's a little bit big, so um, I don't know that that's as relevant here, but if you have a smaller backpack, for example, you may start running into some of those issues. So if you're working with a VR character, for example, or you have like a capsule that goes from the floor to the camera, I'd probably recommend attaching the backpack to that instead of the camera itself because the camera attaching it to the camera can become just a little bit inconsistent because it's behind your head it's not behind you like you would normally expect a backpack to be um so yeah let me go and jump into the video and i can show you exactly how we can put all this together now if you remember in part one of this video i recommended that you keep every actor that's being held by the inventory backpack and store that into an array so that way we're able to use that later on 
In this video, we're finally going to be using that little array. So first thing we want to do is in our inventory component, we want to create a new function. Now this function we're going to call set active actors and this is going to allow for us to either make all of the actors that we're containing visible or invisible. So we'll grab all of those actors that we are currently storing and then in our for each loop, we want to set actor hidden in game on each and every one of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass this back into our function as a Boolean input. So that way we can go back and forth and we don't need to worry about having two different types of functions that basically do the same thing, just kind of the inverse. Then on the completed of our for each loop, we also want to create one more variable. This is going to be called, this is going to be a Boolean. And I'm going to call this active with a question mark at the end. And this is just going to be the knotted version of that Boolean input that we're getting in our function. And this is just going to tell us whether or not we're actively trying to store objects in our inventory component. If we're not holding on to our inventory component, we want to just kind of leave this alone. Otherwise, we might be able to store objects while it's mounted on our back or on our side or wherever it is that you may have this backpack stored. To use this Boolean, we'll have to jump back into the event graph and then under event tick, we just want to take that active Boolean and then we just want to run it through a branch and if that branch is true, then we want to run everything in our event tick. Since this event tick is what's actually actively checking, to see what is and isn't currently stored. Next, we'll jump into our backpack actor. And in here, we need to do two things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab the static mesh that we're grabbing onto. And I wanna just disable the shadow on this. I personally don't like seeing the shadow for any part of the backpack whatsoever. And it definitely will be a little bit annoying when it's on our back. So in this case, I'm just going to remove the shadow altogether since it's really not a necessity. However, if you would like, you are also able to just make the shadow only visible when we actually have our backpack in our hand. The next thing we want to do is we also want to jump into our grab component. And in here, we want to get the on grabbed and on dropped event. For these, the first thing we're going to want to do for both the on grabbed and the on dropped is we're going to want to grab that inventory component which we just modified and we want to call that set active actors function. Now on grabbed, we're going to make sure that this active Boolean input is going to be set to false. And then on, tr on dropped, we're going to make sure that this gets set to true. So that way we make sure that everything gets set to visible correctly and only when it's actually being held. Now on dropped, we want to do one more step and we want to run attach actor to component. Now the target can remain itself, that is perfectly fine, but parent needs to be set to a new variable that we're going to create right here. This variable I'm going to be calling player attach and this is just going to be a scene component, it's just going to determine where we're actually attaching this backpack to when it's not in use. And we want to make sure that this variable is both instance editable and that it is exposed on spawn. These will both be important once we're using this in the VR pawn. Once you have this variable all set up, we need to make sure that the location and rotation both snap to target. And we just want to make sure that the scale role is set to keep world. Once we're all done with this, we now have a backpack that's ready to snap to our player's back. So what I'm going to do is in the level, I'm going to go and remove this backpack since it's no longer going to be used by the player. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the VR pawn. Now here in the VR pawn, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run spawn actor and this is going to be run on begin play. The class that we're going to be spawning is going to be the backpack actor, the one that we just modified. Then once we spawn this actor, you will see that we have that player attached variable as an input when we spawn the backpack, which is part of what we set up the instance editable and the expose on spawn for was so we could see this. 
So what we need to do is we need to have some kind of scene component that the backpack can attach to when it's released. So what we'll do is we'll go and jump into the viewport and then in this case, I'm just going to attach a scene component to the camera. If you have something that's a little bit more stationary such as a capsule component, I would definitely recommend that. But since I don't, I'm just going to attach it to the camera. I'm just going to move it back on the camera a little bit so that way hopefully it's a little bit more out of the player's way. Now I did make just a brief mistake here. If we go and jump back into the event graph, we do also need to make sure that that spawn transform is set to something. I'm just going to split the strike pin since that'll also clear up that error. Um, and the location really doesn't matter. We're going to set that up right here in a second as well. And we'll go and pass that scene component into the player attach input. Then I'll go and keep this backpack as a variable on our VR pawn. We're not going to end up using this backpack anywhere. I just like to keep references to anything that's going to be attached, especially if it's at all times. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach this backpack to a component. And we're basically going to be following the same exact steps. We'll go and attach it to our backpack attachment scene component. And then we'll set up the location rotation, both to snap to target and the scale to keep world. Now, once we're all done with this, there is one final step that needs to be done. And that is going to be that we need to modify the nearest grab component function that is usually built right into the VR pawn. Now, the reason for this is actually pretty simple. While we have the backpack on our back, if we go to reach for something and we accidentally grab something that's contained in our backpack, we may accidentally end up grabbing it. But fortunately, this is a very easy thing to work around. So in this function, what we're going to do is I'm going to take everything after this is valid and move it back. And we're just going to add in one single branch in between this uh, get is valid and the is valid here for our grab component. So I'll grab our ray element. And in here, I want to see if the actor is hidden in game. I'll go and feed that into a branch. And if this branch returns false, then we want to go ahead and consider this as an actor that we can possibly grab. This is just going to help prevent us from accidentally grabbing onto anything that is hidden and we really don't want to be grabbing because it's currently contained within the backpack itself. And it's as simple as that. With that, we now have a backpack that we can easily place on our back or anywhere else on our body for that matter. And we're able to reach back, grab it, and then start sorting through our various items that we have in our backpack while we are working on it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And I also wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.